This talk is based on a survey that I ran between uh, January and March this year, exploring how Kotlin is growing, uh, how it's being used, and where it's actually going. You may have seen it, uh, or I may have pestered you on Twitter or in different Slack channels uh, for a retweet, and I hope to share this further. Uh, what you'll see in this talk will have some numbers and we'll have some rather subjective interpretation of those numbers. Start with the first number. Kotlin is number two. It makes developers happy. And uh, according to the Stack Overflow survey that they released earlier this year, it's the second, second most loved language uh, out of all the languages they have, and it's a lot of languages. Um, <clears throat> funny thing is, I also noticed this uh, when I was first starting playing around with it as an Android developer coming from Java. Um, it just made me happy. I was happy when I was uh, developing Kotlin, and uh, that's quite intriguing, because uh, computers don't usually make me happy. Um, and when I was talking to some other people, like they all shared this kind of sentiment, so uh, I felt it was worthy to dig into this further. And then this happened. This was last year at Google I.O. Uh, can we have a show of hands of who's been that to that event? Oh yeah, about 30, 40%. I mean, it's hard to see for me. Uh, well, yeah, this is where they announced Kotlin support as a Kotlin's officially supported language on Android. And uh, that was a big cheer. Um, I was not there. I was uh, watching the stream uh, at my local IO Extended, and even then, that, that was like, uh, there was a lot of uh, happy faces. And then later this year, they announced, again at Google IO, uh, that 35% of Android developers who are using Android Studio, their tooling, are actually using Kotlin. And uh, coming away, moving away from Google, uh, we also noticed some uptick in Kotlin usage and requests for either Kotlin documentation or Kotlin support with our own SDKs. And uh, so that's part of the reason why we decided to go full speed ahead and uh, explore it. A little bit of me, uh, about me. I work with Pusher. We make real-time APIs that power a bunch of apps around here. Actually, there are several of our customers in this conference. Um, we power all sorts of stuff, like live widgets for news, chat applications, ride-hailing. Crypto is quite big lately. Um, and uh, our SDKs, our newer SDKs, ChatKit, uh, our chat, dedicated chat SDK, and Beams, our push notification solution, are all written in Kotlin for Android. Um, so yeah, we decided to double down on the language, on the ecosystem, to give something, some first-hand support to developers using it. So, uh, but why do a survey about it? I just like surveys. I think they're fun, they're great to share, they're great to, to read, and uh, they can be interesting. And we also wanted to build something that we can share the love with, the love of Kotlin with the community. And uh, we're just intrigued, like, what's hot, what's coming, what's, uh, what's next, where is it going? So, uh, early this, uh, last month, actually, July, I, we released this as a, full-on report as a website. Um, there's going to be a link uh, towards the end. Um, I'm going to be going through the numbers from this report and uh, adding some bits that I learned since we published this. So this talk is roughly structured around, uh, I'm going to start talking about the demographics to know who is, who are the Kotliners who filled it in. Um, and then how they started to learn Kotlin, what they used to learn it, how they adopt it, and then what they use it for. How big is Android? Um, moving on, we'll look at some of the favorite features, why they're favorite features, or why people are not using some features, and uh, finalize with the tools or ecosystem, seeing how this goes. We've had quite a lot of responses, 2,744. Um, I was hoping for 1,000, so 
that was good. And keep in mind that these numbers are from January to March, so it's not from all the time. And these people spent 25 days filling in the survey, which is pretty cool. Not in Facebook numbers, but still, pretty nice number. Um, most of them are techies, employed in tech. 14% uh, are also students, so quite a varied population, mostly professionals. Um, and around half, there is a halfway split between people who have less and more than five years of development experience. Um, this is like roughly similar to what Stack Overflow and other similar surveys get when they're talking about developer populations, so uh, um, I would say it was quite accurate. People also come from all over the world. We try to do our best to uh, spread the word about the survey uh, globally, so we've had a lot of countries uh, chip in to, the, to this. People, when we ask them what, whether they use Kotlin or how they use it, so a lot of employees actually use it on projects. Um, it might just be that Kotlin users are very enthusiastic about, uh, about using Kotlin and sharing the fact that they're using Kotlin. Um, there's a bit less usage between students, but they more than, more than intend to pick it up soon. And when it comes to where they work, there is quite a big uh, uh, peak at the 32 to 5 people in the company working on Kotlin, which kind of translates to, uh, it's a product team, right? So a product team can decide, I'm gonna build this app or, or a feature, and they can use Kotlin. So, and given that a lot of us are using it on Android, it kind of it kind of resonates. There is also about 20% between zero and one people, uh, one person in the company is uh, writing Kotlin, and there is 4% who say there is more than 50 per people writing Kotlin in their company. So, Google's and uh, JetBrains's and the like, I would presume. So yeah. The state of Kotlin. So my hope for this report was that if you've not yet tried it, um, it might give you some, some spur you into trying it. If you have teammates that are uh, still questioning it, maybe you can share it with them and give it to them to try it out. Or uh, just check it out and uh, maybe you'll find something interesting. Someone said that it's like Java++. I'll take that as a compliment, but uh, it's all subjective. Okay, so let's look at how people start learning Kotlin. When we asked, uh, when have you first started working with Kotlin or using Kotlin? Um, there was a massive spike after I.O. 2017 when it was officially recognized as a support, officially supported language on Android. But before its growth has also been quite remarkable as well, so massive spikes in 2015. Um, this is, I think this is partially true, um, partially due to the community that started adopting it. So coming from Dan's yesterday's keynote, um, that, was, that was just remarkable. People who are writing blog posts, people who are giving talks, people who are uh, pushing to open source, just promoting this, and uh, that's what helped. Uh, if you remember, there was a document about uh, using Project Kotlin for Android by Jake Wharton, who wanted to promote it at Square. Uh, they do some Kotlin, I think, now, so it's been quite successful. Um, yeah, but community has really picked it up in 2015, 2016 and just went with it, basically. Students are a bit slower to adopt it, but still, um, they're, after Google announced it, it's just coming in droves. How people use it, how people learn it, um, we asked what kind of resources they use to, have you used to learn Kotlin? And uh, this was a multiple choice question, so there would be, people could answer like 10 things or, or even more. 
And over half of the, all the answers said that the resources came from JetBrains, which is remarkable. They're really pushing it. Um, unsurprising, but still remarkable. The top resource is clearly kotlinland.org, the official website, all the documentation. Around 90% of people are getting stuff from there. But they also have books. They also have a podcast. Hadi Hariri has a podcast, so that's also um, <clears throat> quite popular. The top non-Kotlin resource was uh, the Kotlin Weekly Newsletter, uh, with about 20% of uh, all the respondents says, hey, I get news from, uh, I get my learnings from that newsletter. And of course, I mentioned the community already. Uh, people in the survey name dropped several people who are at this conference uh, right now, so that's super cool. Um, also, for students and younger techies, they rely less on documentation and less on written things and more on video, which is also uh, quite remarkable. But they don't, developers don't just use Kotlin, obviously. Like, a lot of people still use Java because uh, that's where we came from. And, uh, but there's people mentioned 30 or 30 to 40 languages apart from Java and Kotlin, that they, that they use it. Um, JavaScript and Python are not surprising, but uh, and neither is Swift or C Sharp. There's actually quite a lot of uh, vocal C Sharpers who are raving about Kotlin in, in the, some of the responses. I'm going to touch back on this uh, later on. There's pretty much every JVM based language and uh, on so on. And yeah, how big is Android? In our Survey, it was about 80%. People use Kotlin for building Android apps. Um, some other surveys, they've got numbers around 70, but I would say the reality is 70 to 80% is about uh, the, an accurate number. Um, a lot of people also use it for backend or server side or SDK development, and uh, I was quite surprised by uh, the data science answers in the other and uh, when I went to look into it, I tur it turned out that there is quite a quite a active uh, Slack channel in uh, Kotlin Lang that's got two to 250 people debating about using Kotlin for data science. So it's getting into other tranches of tech as well. When it comes to Kotlin in your code base. Um, surprisingly, surprising number of people said it's over 75% of their code base of their main project is Kotlin, which is really cool. Um, higher, a lot higher with their personal projects because, sure, you can experiment more. They're smaller, um, but yeah. And uh, now we can start talking a little bit about uh, features of the Kotlin. That of Kotlin that people like. Null safety, unsurprisingly, is uh, in the lead, but pretty much every other feature, people still love it. People, people feel that these features are helping them. So we, ch we asked about uh, extension functions, we asked about Java interoperability, also everything until coroutines. But people answered with so many things when we said, hey, you have anything else, just say. And uh, yeah, we've got so many different answers. Mm. It's also remarkable that multi-platform and coroutines that are still labeled as experimental features, they're still being loved by people and uh, projects are being developed with this to to, uh, to support a lot of apps. Um, yeah, another quote that I saw. It doesn't get in the way of getting the job done. It just works. It makes people happy, I'm getting back to this. It's fact, I mean, they're modern features. There's been a lot of language development that just kind of help it. So let's look at some of the features in depth to see how they're being used vast majority uh, obviously have used extension functions. They're the easiest thing to, to start with. And uh, 
They use it for everything, for uh, DSL builders, for avoiding null checks, uh, for lambda parameters, and they just make code cleaner. I see it that, for me personally, they make the API a lot nicer to read because you can make it a lot more uh, fluid, basically. And moving on from extension functions, we asked about migrations. So a lot of people actually migrated code from Java into Kotlin uh, in their existing projects. And uh, let's see how that went. Most used either the wizard to convert entire classes or uh, rewrote stuff manually. Also, if you've been at uh, uh, Jesse's and Egor's talk from Square, they gave a talk about how they migrated uh, OKO or OKIO, the library that's powering OKHTP and retrofit and the likes to Kotlin. Now, it's, I think that's just a start. Like, we're going to see more and more of people doing this, converting their projects from Java into Kotlin, even libraries, the things that people actually depend on. Uh, and uh, the standard library size is not a major concern anymore, and that will probably help migrating. What's also interesting uh, is that 10% of Brave Souls decided that it's a good idea to migrate entire projects to, uh, with the wizard. And uh, sometimes that doesn't go as planned. Yeah, a quarter of the people who said they migrated Java to Kotlin, they said, oh, we needed to backtrack somewhat. And it's unsurprising. Um, first off, if you do automatic migration, it does not really, like, you can use it somewhere. If, if you have generated code, it's not the nicest code to look at. It's not the nicest API, so um, it does not provide idiomatic Kotlin. And yeah, there is a lot of uh, exclamation marks in there. And, uh, but there's other reasons as well. Especially in the past, we've had a bunch of uh, dependency problems with dependencies, uh, the ones that use reflections, the ones that uh, depended on data classes, uh, everything in Kotlin being final was also, uh, also a, quite a big issue. Or if they're not technical, they could be also organizational. And if your organization has a lot of red tape and you just ru rush head first into changing stuff into Kotlin, then you might have to backpedal a bit when people say, hey, why did you, why did you introduce this huge, little, huge dependency? This is a new language, this is horrible. So some people actually need to go back because of organizational reasons. Um, one more thing about technical reasons. Um, there's uh, a lot of things, because people have had to migrate before. It could be before 1.0 or before 1.1. 1 .1. So uh, different versions of Kotlin have since updated and fixed some of the issues that people had in the past. So like Spring had some problems uh, as well. And personally, I've noticed uh, a bit in our experimentation as well that Kotlin, if you're doing it, it might be very easy to overdo it. Like, so if you go like, too much Kotlin, and uh, you just end up writing Scala. And Scala can result in an unmaintainable mess. Um, yeah, coroutines. Experimental, but a third of people has said they used it. Um, they solve so many problems. I've been at the DroidCon in Berlin two months ago, where there was a panel about replacing RxJava. I think it was titled, like, Is RxJava Dead? And they kind of reached a consensus that coroutines might be better for a lot of reasons, um, even though they're still uh, experimental. And this is where we actually come back to our C-sharp expats that I mentioned earlier. C-sharp was the first modern language to kind of pick up coroutines and popularize them. So when they saw async and await in, in a different language, hell yeah, let's get on that. Um, 
So anything trading related, I.O. stuff, it's really cool. And if you use Rx Java just to use the schedulers, then coroutines might be a better thing to use. Um, but yeah, some people don't like it. Might be experimental, may not be the best thing to use. So uh, let's, let's wait until they, they uh, finalize the API. Or YOLO. I'm not sure whether that was Square or Amex or, uh, but yeah, um, we use them a bit as well, so uh, they seem to work fine. <clears throat> and now we're moving on to one of my favorite topics, uh, DSLs. I'm a big fan. I feel that they can make certain use cases really sensible. I also feel that the rumors of their over complexity have been greatly exaggerated. Among DSLs, Anko is the crowd favorite, uh, followed by Kotlin Gradle DSL, the KTS one, and uh, KotlinX.html. A thing about uh, Gradle DSL, um, there's actually, I checked with uh, the Gradle guys at the booth. Uh, there was actually like thousands of projects, open source projects on GitHub that are actually using uh, uh, Gradle, like th 3,000 something, uh, they're using Kotlin for Gradle. So, and that's just the open, uh, open GitHub search. It could be a lot more. And the numbers are increasing, so it's getting there. Out of those 40% who use DSLs, a quarter of those actually wrote their own DSLs. And, uh, the stuff people use to the stuff the stuff people build is uh, quite remarkable. It could be highly domain specific things, so like machine learning or artificial intelligence. Even someone mentioned something with medicine, or uh, like big kind of chunky medicinal data uh, munging. Testing is a legit uh, use case. Jake Wharton again, he had the blog post, or no, it was a talk actually. Um, testing robots, I've linked to it in the end, um, about using DSLs to make your tests a lot more fluid. Or they could be something like uh, UI declarations or uh, making your data structures nicer. And obviously anything configuration related, DSLs can help a lot. So yeah, beyond the JVM, beyond Android, a quarter of people actually said, hey, we're gonna use this. Um, there's been a surge of popularity, and the same as with uh, coroutines, there's been more than two or three talks on this topic at this conference, so uh, I'm pretty sure these numbers are gonna go just up uh, when, I do, when we do the survey the next year, so uh, I'm quite exciting, uh, excited about this. Kotlin native, it's the most popular and uh, followed by Kotlin.js. Mm, a notable mention is the app that you might be using for this conference. Kevin built this with uh, Kotlin Native, both, and it has clients for both uh, Swift and, uh, or iOS and uh, Android, so that's pretty cool. There was also a lot a lot of content outside of this conference, like my friend Guillermo, gave this talk at uh, Kotlin Community Conference. Uh, he built this tool called Keynote Dex, which is like speaker deck, but uh, that's, that he built in uh, Kotlin, uh, both the server side and the front end side. Um, and on the tool side, I've mentioned OKO2. Uh, there's also S SQL Delight from uh, Square in the library side. And uh, in order to build this, uh, in order to build this Kotlin DroidCon application, there's uh, Kevin built a NARC DB, um, which is basically a SQLite implementation in Kotlin. You can check it out. It's it's pretty cool, Kotlin native. And yeah, but there is that's not it, right? People Kotlin doesn't have everything because people might be missing something. So among the most mentioned features that people miss was the ternary operator. 
So kind of like Elvis, but a bit more, more elaborate. Some other languages have, the, have it. People ask for even more syntax sugar. I guess we're getting that now with uh, tools like uh, KTX and similar that kind of use extension functions to uh, give us more functionality. Sing, uh, single abstract methods for uh, some cases. They work in some cases, but uh, they don't in, the, in other cases. Uh, pattern matching, more custom operators. And then also things like uh, a multi-platform IDE, uh, guard-like syntax for people who came from Swift and uh, from our friends C-sharp expats, uh, they asked for LinQ. So um, that's everything that they miss. And there's a couple of things that people dislike. So companion objects, the way Kotlin does statics, it's not everyone is a fan of this. I'm converted now, but I wasn't sure about it earlier, like a couple of years ago, so uh, that's one thing. Something, some people complain that everything is public, that everything is final, um, <clears throat> that there's too many exotic keywords, that uh, there's no package local modifier, so, so someone actually said that there, it's not dynamic and that's a problem. I mean, Kotlin is the dynamic. If you use Kotlin.js, you have the dynamic keyword, which allows you to do uh, all sorts of JavaScript like crazy. So yeah, and yesterday, Ty gave a talk about uh, what they're doing at Uber to manage all the hundreds of Android engineers that they have, and he was insure, and about how they ensure all the teams work as well as possible together. So yeah, let's look at the tools and library ecosystem. We asked about Android build tools, uh, Kotlin build tools. I mean, obviously, most of us are Android developers, so all the Android ones are here. Um, Gradle, IntelliJ, Android Studio, obviously. Kotlin C was quite small, and uh, there was actually a build tool that's written in Kotlin, uh, Codeine, I think. Uh, I believe it's Codeine, I might be mistaken. Um, and that was like just 1% of people said. And someone even responded that they are the author of a bug build system that uh, both uh, Facebook and uh, Square use, Uber use, and uh, yeah, they asked why it's Buck is not mentioned. But that was the only mention of Buck. Um, and yesterday I also asked on Twitter what kind of libraries do people like that are Kotlin, Kotlin first or Kotlin focused, and. I've got so many responses, both on Twitter and in offline. So, uh, Coin, Arrow, Spec, KTX, extensions, OKO, like from yesterday, I guess. Uh, NARC, there is a lot. Fun fact, when I was digging through the whole library ecosystem, I realized that there's no less than three implementations of Redux in Kotlin. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I guess we're getting into the JavaScript world here. So, uh, and if you want to hear about the fourth implementation, my friend Nish uh, is doing a talk uh, after this one. So he's gonna be doing that, basically. Um, and you might have seen something, uh, a pattern emerging here. Coin, spec, Cluent, um, Docker, NARC. They like to replace C's with K's. And to be honest, most people don't really care. But when it comes to students or younger developers, they're like quite happy to see that kind of stuff. Someone even mentioned it, uh, Kotlin to be like mortal combat of programming languages. So yeah, that was a brief overview of what we had. You can find out more at pusher.com slash state dash off dash Kotlin. There's gonna be graphs. There's gonna be raw data. We put the whole data set on Kaggle. So if you're a data science enthusiast, you wanna have a uh, look around. If you don't trust me, uh, check it out. And yeah, the graphs actually animate on the site, uh, so it's pretty cool. There's gonna be a new one next year. There's going to be a new one next year, and 
I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to start the survey probably beginning of next year. If you have any suggestions, if you have any ideas of what you want to see, um, I have some. And uh, come to me, come talk to me, and uh, let's make State of Kotlin 2019 a lot better, a lot more thorough, and uh, let's get five, 10,000 developers responding. I'm Zan, this was the State of Kotlin, a brief look into where we are and where we're going. Hope you enjoyed it. You can get the slides at uh, this bit.ly link if you want to chat about how we built this or how we created it, uh, just come chat to me or I think we might actually have some uh, time for questions. Oh, by the way, we're, ha we're hiring at Pusher, so we work, I'm, I'm in, I work in London, but uh, we're hiring Android engineers, uh, architects, uh, anyone who wants to do cool real-time SDKs. Yeah, it's a cool company, so that's it. Thank you.